In this video, I'm going to walk you through the steps of creating a managed environments. But what is managed environments at first place? Uh, it's a new capability within a Power Platform Admin Center to uh, make an environment managed. Now, when an environment is considered as managed, uh, it allows an admin to uh, manage those environments uh, at scale uh, by putting less effort and generating more meaningful insights. Uh, now, managed environment can be used with any types of environment. Now, uh, it can be a dev, it can be a prod, it can be a trial. So, managed environments can be marked uh, for any of those environments. Now, what are the primary elements we get out of those managed environments? First thing, sharing limits. Second, solution checker capability, weekly insights, data policies, and power platform pipelines and enablement of customer logbox. Now I'll go through these points uh, in more depth uh, in this video. Uh, there's one more important consideration you need to make with regards to licensing. Now the user will need premium use rights for Power Apps, Power Automate, or Dynamics 365 licenses once an environment is made managed. Now, think about a scenario. You have an unmanaged environment or like a normal environment. Uh, and if you have created an app, uh, say it's a Canvas app. Okay. Now, let's assume you are not using any premium connectors. Now, it's okay if you use uh, out-of-the-box or default licenses offered by Microsoft 365 uh, and all your apps will work fine. But the moment you turn the environment as into managed environment, then the licensing consideration changes. Now, even if you don't use a premium connector, still users who's part of those environment, and if you have built an app or a flow or any other uh, power platform related components, then the user needs to have a premium use rights to use those applications. So that's just the downfall. But uh, the positives are you will get a whole bunch of uh, functionality, uh, which I'm going to walk through in a moment. Okay. So first thing first, let's go into Power Platform Admin and see what is the difference. Okay. Now I'm in a Power Platform Admin Center. I am in the Environments tab. These are set of environments which have been created so far. Let's see the first environment, say Gerish Dev. Now, if you click on this environment, I can see that this environment is already a managed environment. Now, how did I come to know about it? This is, I can see this option called as edit managed environment. I'll come to that. Uh, if I see this environment, Gerish Upple's environment, it is not a managed environment, and that's why the button is there to make it managed environment. So if I click on Enable Managed Environment, I can uh, get this environment converted into managed environment mode. Uh, default environment, can you enable a default environment to be managed? Yes, we can do that, but I'm not going to do that for a moment. What about trial? Now, this is a trial environment. Yes, you can also enable a managed environment on a trial environment. Now, let's focus for time being over here. I have two dev environments. One is a managed environment and another is an unmanaged environment. Okay. Now, this environment, if I click on Enable Managed Environment, I can make this environment as managed. Okay. Now, the moment I do that, some settings appear. Okay. So, I've already converted this environment into managed environment. Let me edit some settings over here and see how does the managed environment looks like. Now, first thing, uh, as I mentioned to you, licensing details will change. So within this environment, if you have created any app, whether you have used a premium connector or not, any user, if they want to access an app within this environment, they need to have a premium use rights for Power Apps, Power Automate, and Dynamics 365. Okay. Now, second feature we get is limit sharing. Okay, now what do you mean by limit sharing? So it applies to a Canvas app. Uh, imagine a situation whereby you have built a Canvas app within your environment and if you have say 5,000 users within that environment, now users can accidentally share this with everyone group. 
or maybe user can share those apps with anyone within an organization. Now, if you want to set some control over it, you need to select this option and say exclude sharing with security group and limit total individuals who can share to maybe say 10 or whatever is a convenient number within your organization so that you can limit the share of those apps which are i would say may not be like a production ready app it's just like a productivity app built by an end user and they want to share it within your organization so you can set those limits but remember this only applies to canvas apps and one thing to consider if you make this change this change is not immediate it will take an hour to reflect and uh, if the app already has been shared with say say 50 users let's assume and if you have set a limit as 10 then any additional users who's been added to the app uh, that person will not be able to share those app to more than say 10 users so you can't add more users to that share however uh, you can remove those users who have been already been shared to this app okay so the limit is say whatever you set over here third point which we are going to talk about now is solution checker so what is solution checker solution checker is an application which is built within say power platform uh, the application which gets passed through that solution checker is basically a solution file and it runs some security and reliability valid validations to check whether the app is ready for import or not if the app is not ready to import then you may get some sort of a notification okay now what the setting does is if you select this as one it will allow the import of the solution however it will send you an email okay that uh, this application has some issue if you select this option as block then if the solution checker identifies some issues with the app or app solution then uh, it, it won't import it if you select as none neither you will be warned nor you will receive any specific notification and your solution will be imported as it is okay now if i select here an option send emails only when a solution is blocked uh, a similar kind of email will be sent like say if you see this screen like i tried uh, importing the solution okay for this environment which was a managed environment and it gives me an email which says the solution has been imported but there are no results or the results have expired or you know like it will give you some information if there are any potentially harmful imports being observed by the system so that's a nice way to know uh, the import process has been uh, executed successfully or not uh, the fourth option what we see over here is a usage insights so if an environment is marked as managed then you can see rich insights for the environment in the weekly email digest or you can see in the interface as well okay so uh one example i can show you over here is like say maybe i can see the licenses preview and i can see whether my environment needs some uh licensing uh based uh requirements or not so and it will give me some recommended actions to add a power apps or power user per app or power apps per app licenses mm -hmm. so and then i can select some environment say let's assume i select this and then it will give me some more information uh, about this so i i can see some recommended actions for this environment uh, if i say just see if i have any other environment uh, so there's no specific environment so it's just showing me for one environment yep so and then i can see if there are any requirements or not for this particular environment so yeah it, it will give you a whole bunch of information uh, let me again go back to the environment settings yep now uh, usage insights will give you uh, an information about how the apps are being used within your organization what are the top apps what are the top flow so it's i'll say it's kind of a subset of information provided by the center of excellence starter kit uh, and it will give you a good amount of summary about how this app is being utilized within your organization i'll not go through much depth now but i'll cover that in the future videos 
another uh, way is like uh, another feature which is provided by managed environment is something called as make a welcome content now here we can put a text okay now this text will be displayed to an end user okay whenever uh, they uh, whenever the user uh, so for the first time if they log in logs into the environment and you can give some uh, some custom url for your internal repository now i've just used my website but you can use whatever uh, is the url of your organization which provides some knowledge base for your organization now where it is rendered so let's assume if i go to say make.powerapps.com and let me say yeah if i navigate to the environment let's assume for the first time and if i select this environment then and a screen gets loaded up it will show me uh, the the message whatever i have typed over there and this will be kind of an introductory message to your user who has been just uh, newly logged into your uh, organization who's like a citizen developer and has a more interest or keenness to build an app for your organization if i click on learn, learn more it will take me to the custom url which i set which i have now set to my web page uh, I can click on this option and then this option will never be shown to me henceforth. Okay. So, so that's how I can see those welcome message. Now let's assume like, uh, if you want to go back to the message and see what that message was, now there's no way to get it back. So what you can do is like, you can click on say learn. And then once you click on learn, there is an option over here called as from your org. Okay. The moment you uh, click on from your org, uh, then uh, you will see the messages what was typed over here and then again you can navigate to learn more and then get some more information so this is mainly for an end user who is pretty much new to your organization and who wants to see how we can build or how we can extract those resources uh, within uh, your organization to build some good uh, product uh, or like an app or a flow or a chatbot or in any sort of artifacts so uh, I'd say like that's it uh, from a managed environment perspective. There are other topics like data policies. You can see the data policies for this environment. So it is essentially uh, going back to uh, like say if I click over here, uh, it will allow uh, you to access the DLP policy which has been set within your organization. Now I have created one DLP policy within my organization to block say one connector named as Twitter. And then I can um, set those and this particular policy is specifically applied to this environment. So, so it, it's a good uh, way to govern your uh, environment uh, by disallowing users to publish all the uh, like organizational based information in social media website. So that's it, folks. This is about managed environments. It's a new feature. Uh, it's still under development. You might see a lot of features coming up released by microsoft in the next cadence uh, so watch out for the space and i'll try to get some more information about managed environment and i'll uh, i'll come up with some additional video in the future thanks for watching